<laughs> I'm not the Disney Channel. <laughs> Bloop -boop -boop. Hey everybody, I'm Michael. I'm Molly. And today we're going to talk to you one of my favorite videos that we do every year, music in 2024 so far. So like in previous years, we're going to talk about music that is new in 2024, music that is older than from 2024 but is new to us in 2024, and music that we are still into in 2024. It's also one of my favorite videos of the year. So in new music in 2024, we wanted to start by talking about Willow. And yes, by Willow, I mean Willow Smith. Yes, I mean whip my hair, Willow. She's actually a brilliant musician. The ultimate Nepo baby, but like, honestly, like doing it, doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and we could talk about how a Nepo baby is not only that they are getting the opportunities, but they also get the training. And I think she got yeah. the training. Oh, yeah. Because she is legitimately crazy talented. I mean, this is fully a jazz album, which I don't think anybody expected. I know I didn't. And when I heard it, I was like, oh, this is really complex jazz music. Yeah. And she's doing things with her voice that are not just sonorities that are from like the jazz world, but also like really experimenting with the colors in her voice. I don't think you have the instinct to do that without the right training and guidance and references. It's so fun and playful and creative. Yeah. Yeah, I find jazz always surprises me. Like it's not a thing that I think of myself as liking. And then when I hear it, I can't resist it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I don't necessarily seek it out. So the fact that, like, this Willow album came out, you played it for me, and then hearing it and going, oh, I'm so into this. If you are unsure of what to listen to, listen to Symptom of Life. That's the best song on the album. It was her her first single on it, and she chose correctly for the first single because <laughs> it's, it's, it's very so cool. Yeah, I also recommend her Tiny Desk concert, which is excellent. Yeah, yeah. Her band in that is so yeah, good. So good. And she's so good. Like, her voice voice sounds so luscious. Right. And, it, and she proved that it's not just a studio trick because totally. NPR doesn't allow a lot yeah. of vocal manipulation. So like that's that's real. That's her. I've also been really into Adrian Lanker's new album. Adrian Lanker is the lead singer of Big Thief, who have been indie darlings for a few years now. But Adrian Lanker's solo career is also very good, which she's been doing for a long time. Her album's called Bright Future, and I especially love the song Ruined. And there are a lot of other songs on that album that I really like. But if you want to check out just one, mm -hmm. check out Ruined. I think it's a way of writing a love song that gets to what love can do to you sometimes in that mm -hmm. it's not just saying, oh, I love you so much. It's saying, when you come around, I can't function because I love you so much. And I think that's something that we don't hear a lot of in music. What do I want to say about another sky? Beach day. Ba -da -da -da. You can talk about her voice. Ba -da -ba -da. Her voice is so exciting. I love her voice. I think her voice is so exciting, but I also think the songs are so good, and mm -hmm. I also think that it's exciting rock music. Yeah. Like, they really go hard. Mm -hmm. The song I've been obsessed with is this, The Pain. The pain makes me feel like I'm alive. Yeah, but I also love how she plays with her range in it. Another one <laughs> that really plays with the colors of her voice, right? Yeah, they've been around for a while. I somehow did not hear about them, but there are some videos going back a ways of them in England playing concerts with a choir. <gasps> her voice is so good, and when she sings there's a track that like almost moves me to tears every time I hear it called I Never Had Control. You hear her processing some kind of experience and accepting, right? Like I don't have control and I never did. That is like so like, I get so emotional about it. It's so cathartic and her voice is just like nothing I've ever heard before. But I think on that song, I Never Had Control, the way she plays with register and that suits the song mm -hmm. because she when she's saying i never uh, like the the when she jumps up to the higher register it's more fragile sounding up there right. she really knows what her unique voice does and how to use that to express what she wants to in the music yeah i think there are a lot of artists that are playing with 
vocal colors and different vocal sounds. Nowadays, I think it's not that uncommon, but I don't know that any of them are doing it with the intention Mm-hmm. Like that she is. Well, maybe, I mean, some of them are, but like she is doing it in a way that is really exciting to me. I haven't spent that much time with this album. I mean, I've been listening to it a lot, but I haven't interrogated it that deeply. But I get almost like a through line, like concept y feeling from it. Like it feels like it starts in this one sort of positive. Well, I mean, it's not fully positive, but like the whole album is kind of dark and then comes around to this deep, dark place and then lifts back up mm-hmm. again. We love an arc. We love a character arc. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it looks like this. I've also really been into Idol's new album, Tank. I've been into Idol's for their past few album cycles. I What I really love about Idol's is that they are heavy energy, hardcore rock. Maybe not all the way hardcore, but they have a certain playfulness to them still and a certain softness in an interesting way. If you listen to a lot of their lyrics, they are very progressive. Their music is very smart, but again, it's very playful. Like the song Dancer, it's about dancing cheek to cheek. But it's like, well, well, dancing, <laughs> cheek to cheek. <laughs> I mean, it's punk, right? Like, yeah. I feel like this is where the punk evolutionary through line has come to. Yeah. It's like bands like that, bands like Parquet Courts, you know, like that's where we've landed. And uh-huh. I think it's really exciting. Yeah, I love it. If you want to check out Idols, start with Dancer. I also wanted to talk about Brittany Howard's new album, What Now? So Brittany Howard has been around for a while. She was originally most known as the lead singer and guitarist of Alabama, Alabama Shakes. Shakes. My mom's favorite. But Brittany Howard's solo career, also very good. Her previous album, Jamie, was more sentimental. Mm. But her new album, What Now, is more experimental in a really interesting way. But that does have a little bit of a trade-off in that there are fewer standout songs. So I don't have a specific song that I want to recommend from What Now. But I think you should give it a listen. She comes from a rock background, but there's some gospel playfulness in there. She's actually very difficult to categorize. I mean, she's doing that Alabama thing, right? Which is, or that like deep South thing, which is you are hearing country music. You're hearing the various black musical genres we associate with black culture. You're hearing church gospel music and it all melds together, um, yeah. which is like what's really exciting about American music in general, right? Right. Well, and, <laughs> and it's what's exciting about American music because all of it is black music. Yes. All <laughs> American popular music is black music. And I think Brittany Howard is one of the exemplary people to show that. Yeah. I think last year when we did this video, we talked about Willie Carlisle, who I was obsessed with. And I think we both continue to be obsessed with. This year, he had a new album out called Critterland. And it's just more really exciting folk country acoustic music. He is really exploring themes of love and grief and how those two things come together, right? Sometimes violently, sometimes gently and sweetly. And he also is exploring the nitty gritty South, which is a theme that I've always found really exciting. It's why I like the drive by truckers. He sort of explores the South as a place that is complex, right? Like it's not the stereotypical MAGA meth, and, you know, what's another thing that starts with M? Um, Mega meth and misogyny. <laughs> like, if, if misogyny meant racism, yeah. Um, well, I guess MAGA does. Um, yeah, keep yes, that it in. does. That's true. Um, come for me. Um, so, <laughs> he really is saying the South is not just that, right? The South is complex. There are complex characters. There are individual people he does the thing that he did on peculiar missouri which is he does sort of a talking story it plays on that story of you have characters that are complex and you go is this person good or evil anyway i think he is just such an exciting artist i think he's not going anywhere also willie would never say that anyone was evil i don't think no i mean his heart's a big tent you gotta let everybody in (laughs) so this album came out at an interesting time in my life i'll just 
sort of leave it at that but a lot of the songs are about death in interesting ways it's made it difficult for me to listen to but all the songs are incredible the one that gets me the hardest is always two-headed lamb but also like really impactful i think is when the pills wear off if you're in a certain mood it's a challenging listen yeah but you know it also it's not all darkness. No, right? it's not. I mean, and, and even the darkness in the album has hints of light. I really like Higher Lonesome because that is a song about how you're searching for something, you're seeking within, you're seeking without. That's something I really identify with. And Critterland, because that just plays into my sort of fantasy of moving into the woods and never talking to anybody ever again. <laughs> it's like a vision of the apocalypse in the best way possible. Yes. <laughs> even in Two Headed Land, Lamb, it's this sad story, but there's a lot of love in that sad story. Like, even God can make a fuck up. I think that's what Willie does best. He reaches out and he touches your heart where it needs to be touched. Mm -hmm. Right? Which sounds so corny, but like, honestly, like, this is what he is doing. Look, I'm a cornball at heart. I can't help myself. He, I think, has access to something that not many people have access to. And he is able to then be a messenger through his music and his songwriting. I don't think any of it is contrived or put on, or I think it is very authentic. And I go for authenticity, man. I think authenticity <laughs> is actually a really interesting angle to bring us to our next album, Ooh. which is Charlie XCS. Mm -hmm. Album Brat. Oh man, she's back. Charlie's back. <laughs> Charlie's back, baby. We are so back. <laughs> um, I haven't talked about it on this channel, but I was disappointed with Charlie's album Crash because it seemed to be stepping away from the bleeding edge of pop music and stepping toward what would make her money. It did make her money. It was a very well-selling album for her. I don't fault her for it. I was just like, eh, not for me. Brat, we're back. She really is one of the top pioneers of hyperpop, and she's sort of reclaiming her crown in this album. If you want to check this album out, I would start with Von Dutch. The title of the album, Brat, is perfect for what the music on this album is. It's bratty music. And it's very Charlie, right? Her persona for a while has been that she is the party girl, and that's what she is but also like she addresses that in this album in a way that's like that's not really who she is she's putting this on like and anyone knows that any public persona is at least partially fake sure but she's in the album she really does talk about how sometimes i don't want a party <laughs> <laughs> even though that's silly i think it actually does get to uh interesting point about celebrity and charlie is one of the perfect celebrities mm -hmm. to talk about it she would probably be one of the first to say that, that it's all bullshit i wanted to start by talking about divorce i did learn about divorce in 2023 but i first heard their ep heavy metal in 2024 which is from 2023 what i think is really exciting about them is they have two lead singers a man and a woman and they work with and against each other in really interesting ways. Like there'll be moments where like one singer will take a verse and then the chorus will be them in octaves. And then the next singer will take the next verse and the chorus will be them in octaves. And then it splits into harmony. There's so few specifics I can point to that are applicable across all of their music because they do interesting things. But they are a band that I listen to when I want to hear really good vocals. Mm. Also new to me in 2024 is the band Big Blood. Molly and I were just listening to this while we were cooking dinner and they have a recent album called First Aid Kit. It sounds like it's going back to older rock music as Molly mm -hmm. said. It's not really playing with the formula that much. Very simplistic, very pared back, yeah. But I think what's interesting about it is the voices the voices of the the two the singer and the backup singer in the band have this really bright piercing timbre oh, almost shrill that adds this flavor to the band that i think is so interesting mm -hmm. that it sounds so fresh yeah against this 
music? What comes to mind is like other musicians that have drawn on those earlier 60s and 50s sounds. Like I think of Amy Winehouse. There was one track that I said sounded like a Phil Spector run Yes, yeah, a, a Thousand Times is probably the track that I would recommend everyone start with. But that does sound like a Ronettes song, kind yeah. of. And yeah, and I mean, and even with like, you know, you talked about the vocals. Like the Ronettes vocals are a little more clear and pleasant but like it's almost like okay hear me out like Annie Hard Knock Life like a a, a chorus of 12 yeah. year old girl yeah. doing their best Ethel Merman belt <laughs> I like that it's intentionally not pretty you know we've been talking a lot about voices today yeah that's an interesting that point. does seem to be like the through line today yeah even the ones we didn't specifically talk about was like we didn't talk about adrian linker's voice but yeah. very very distinctive Soulful. expressive yeah. voice yeah yeah another band that i mostly heard about when i was watching everyone else's best of 2023 albums nice many of them brought up pretty regularly geese 3d country i had heard a song from it in 2023 that i'm like oh yeah this is fun everyone was talking about how great the album was and so i'm like okay i'll check out the whole thing Holy crap. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> I'm obsessed with cowboy nudes. Chicka chicka cha, chicka chicka cha. Come on! My favorite moment on the whole album. <laughs> it feels at turns like jangly 2000s rock, at turns classic rock. At, yeah. Uh, uh, I get I get Rolling Stones. Yeah. I get jammy kind of Grateful Dead kind of thing. You know, only harder, right? Like And more experimental. Um, Way more experimental. I love what they do with like backup vocals. Mm -hmm. The backup vocals especially sound Rolling Stones. -y. And then talking about people that are doing interesting things with their voice. That lead singer when he is like New York City underwater, <laughs> but then like he goes back to like a normal singing voice. Yeah. And then he does this like weird scream shout thing. Yeah. That is so bizarre. It's really really <laughs> fun, interesting rock music. Check yeah. it out. I love it. Also. Also, experimental and playing with boundaries. Oh, yeah. Corinne Bailey Ray, Black Rainbows. So, Who knew? It's like, girl, put your records on, but the records are actually like Miles late Davis. 90s <laughs> riot girl punk. It's all over the place. Black Rainbows is so eclectic in its styles, but Corinne is such an engaging and charismatic vocalist that she makes this all really work for her and make mm -hmm. the album sound cohesive. Okay, I'm gonna be straight with y'all. We had a little fight about whether this should go in the new to me or the new category. Because I think the reason for that is that she went from sort of like a niche internet space to like a huge superstar in like five minutes. At least that's what it seemed like from where I was sitting. Chapel Run, our pride queen of 2024. <laughs> we were talking about how she really exploded into our consciousness oh from the NPR Tiny Desk concert. Yeah, I, she was not on our radar at all. I had heard her name. Yeah. I had not heard any of her music. No one talked about how she did the best bio drag in the business. She is a cis woman who does the best woman drag. She really Immaculate. performed her NPR Tiny Desk concert with like a crushed cigarette in her wig. <laughs> yeah. And she's never not on. I want to talk about her in this context. We are living, and we should be very grateful to be living, in a golden age of lesbian music. In the last few years, we've had Boy Genius exploding, Muna. It's really exciting. And then Chapel Ron comes on the stage and is singing about explicit lesbian sex acts. Muna and Boy Genius are over here talking about their feelings, which is what we expect from gay women. And then you have Chapel Rowan who's like, yeah, you're going down on me in the car. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I don't feel like I've ever heard a gay woman singing about sex in this way. I haven't. And I think it's really exciting. And the fact that this is like a boundary that like is still out there that has to be crossed is unfortunate, right? Because like, I think we've had Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B singing WAP. We've had women singing about sex before, right? Although Going even back to like- then, 
it's still kind of rare. Yeah, but like it even goes back to like Salt and Pepper. Oh sure, yeah, they that it's another really good example. But like you still don't hear it very often. Yeah, like, women talking about being excited about doing sex. And so here's Chapel, and she's like half of the songs on the album are like that is what the song is about, and I just think. It's really exciting. It's really fun. I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm so excited for it. A realization that I came to, not all Chapel Rowan songs are happy songs, mm. but they always have a playful energy to them. Even in mm. the saddest songs, they're still like, whatever, I'm young and hot. <laughs> <laughs> in a way, I think she is the anti-Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, all of her songs are sad. Even when they are ostensibly happy songs, or at least like, fuck you, I'm great songs, like Shake It Off, there's still a little bit of desperation to every Taylor song. Taylor seems to be at her most authentic self when she is sad. Uh, yeah. Which is fine. It's fine. But... I love that we have another option who is hugely popular right now in Chapel Roan, who is at her most authentic self when she is enjoying having sex with a woman. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move on to music that we've been into forever, but we want to point out that we are still into in 2024. I'm going to start with something from the late 60s, The Association. Cheesy, cheesy guy pop group. Everyone knows it's windy and... Cherish is the word, and never my love. And Windy has stormy eyes that flash at the sound oh of lies. Oh my god, it's so cheesy. It's so cheesy, <laughs> but it's so, like, sweet. They're obviously influenced by the Beatles and other oh, right. boy Boy, boop, boy boops. The whole boy like, groups British and major around thing. the time. But yeah. they're 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 an American band. It's cheesy, and it was a fun thing to like. I've never listened to their whole catalog. So I did recently. They only put out like four albums or whatever, but it's fun. It's good stuff. They still they still exist as a band. They still tour. Also, uh, I recently got back into Sam ooh. Amidon. I think I've talked about Sam Amidon on the channel before, but I'm sure we have. If you like. American folk music, check out Sam Amidon. Yeah, follow your Willie Carlisle thread all the way down to Sam Amidon. <laughs> Willie Carlisle will do a pretty faithful retelling of an old folk song. Sam Amidon will be like, but what if this is formless and you just sort of float <laughs> through the song and there's a guitar solo that happens in a different key? We saw him open for I didn't I missed it no I know I was gonna bring that up we like we went to a concert that he was the opening act at you were running late and so I was there by myself while he played to like half a half full club and he was like all alone on stage and like he started doing like this weird like banjo like feedback loop gr like uh crunchy thing and did you do a death rattle at oh some point oh <laughs> my god the audience did not get it it was hilarious honestly like i got it i don't know if i was into it i'm into his music i like one of his albums very much but the audience was like what is happening <laughs> right now it was a whole like performance art situation i think he's brilliant if you are into roots yeah really root, like roots Folk bluegrass yeah. folk but are also into being experimental i think it's blogotech the french youtube channel did a series for a while where they went to a music festival people who were performing at that festival between sets they would grab a random audience member blindfold them take them to a back room and then take off their blindfold and they were in a solo show oh, wow. with an artist or band and there's one with Sam Amidon. And I don't think the person who was sitting across from Sam knew who <laughs> Sam was. But there's also a moment where Sam is doing a murder ballad, which Appalachian music it has a lot of murder ballads in it, which I find fascinating. I yeah. love murder Dolly ballads. Dolly Parton sings murder ballads. A couple, yeah. yeah. At the end of this murder ballad, Sam just lets out this really long death rattle where he goes, ah! And like holds it for really, this really is what long. what I'm talking about, yes. And the person sitting across from him is like, <laughs> but I really love Sam. Yeah, Amazon, he's so great. I check love out him. his stuff. It's, it, 
Yeah. If you want somewhere to start with Sam that is more palatable but also has some ex- experimentation in it, check out his cover of Lilio. Mm, love it so much. It's a stab in the gut at some yeah. point, literally, but also figuratively. <laughs> literally. So something I have been getting back into this summer is car seat headrest. They're first two, depending on how you count it, albums. I would not count it. Teens of Denial and Twin Fantasy, which I think most people agree that Teens of Denial is the better album, but what I have been listening to a lot lately is Twin Fantasy because... It has bodies. Well, because it has (laughs) bodies and it has what I have been really listening to a lot this summer, mostly because I put it on a playlist and it just comes up and then I'm like, oh yeah, we're doing all 13 minutes of this is Beach Life in Death, which is basically like a 13 minute sweet that has this whole like through arc that is really quite dark actually but it makes my emo heart happy because it's not an emo song but it's very emo in spirit from teens of denial the long thing the ballad of the costa concordia oh yeah that also gets really dark yes. i mean will toledo like he has feelings at the end of beach life and death you have this thing where he keeps repeating over and over again the ocean washed over your grave like he keeps repeating it over and over again it has this the, the melody has this arc it's again it's another arc and then the band the thick instrumentation in the band keeps rising and rising while the vocals get lower and lower and it feels to me like when waves come up on sand and they wash away, you know, footprints or whatever is Your there. Your sand castle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it gets fainter and fainter and fainter with each wave that comes. It is brilliant. It's a good me. moment. Like, it's so good. But also, I think it's interesting <laughs> to talk about Twin Fantasy as an album of its time, but also that album existed was, It was way a re-release, yeah. right? Like, I, and it, I recognize that. It's very that. different. Yeah. This has been fun. Thanks for joining us. Let us know what you find interesting in the comments below. I'd love to hear any new recommendations because I'm always listening to new things. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you didn't like this video, please give it a like anyway. <laughs> to this side is a video that YouTube thinks you might like, so check that out. Up there in the corner is the button to get to our channel. We put out reviews, reminiscences, and general ramblings about pop culture, mostly music and video games. If that's interesting to you, please subscribe. I'm going to keep doing that bit every time. And that should be about it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Maintain your groovy selves. Bye, y'all. Bye, <laughs> y'all.